In my video, I pointed out that when the same 70mm Ektachrome ISO 160 was carried aboard the shuttle, it needed to be protected from radiation in bags of water. As Marcus Allen, editor for the magazine Nexus, points out, in 2002, IMAX released their film entitled Space Station 3D. It was a film made entirely about the construction of the International Space Station. They flew the cameras up in the space shuttle with their magazines attached and the IMAX cameras take 70 millimeter roll film, incidentally the same film as was used in the Hasselblad still cameras on Apollo. Mr. Allen directed me to the two following articles. In both of them, the movie's director and producer, Tony Myers, was interviewed. The April 26, 2002 printing of The Telegraph ran an article called A Truly Star-Studded Movie. In it, we find this statement. Because of the limitations of film, each pound in weight costs millions of dollars to blast into space. The astronauts were limited to shooting less than two minutes of film at a time. The astronauts also had to race to shoot the film before it was fogged by the high levels of radiation in space. We had to get the film up to the station, throw it across from the shuttle, shoot it, throw it back to the shuttle, and take it back, all on the same flight to the space station, or it would have been ruined. The April 21st, 2002 printing of the New York Times also featured an article about the production of this movie. Is that a space helmet or just your 3D goggles? Adding to their difficulties, background radiation outside the Earth's atmosphere quickly causes film to fog. Fresh stocks arriving by space shuttle, along with more vital supplies, had to be used in time for the shuttle's return trip, usually within two weeks. Thus, filming in the space station coincided with periods of peak activity. In many ways precisely, the least convenient time. Not until the final phase of the project were means found to retard radiation damage. Shielding film in bags of water did the trick. Between the shuttle's last two visits, three precious rolls remained on board the space station. Everything shot on these rolls, Miss Myers says, made the final edit in full, including those aliens. This is in direct agreement to what NASA told us after NOAA 720 exploded. That solar protons with energies greater than 100 million electron volts can burrow through 11 centimeters of water. It seems that the radiation below the Van Allen belts is so severe the film must be protected in water bags and the film can only be out in open space for two minutes before getting fogged by radiation. While I stand by this statement, I have one minor attraction. It turns out, contrary to what I said, the film could last much longer than two minutes during an EVA. The rolls of film themselves each had a duration of two minutes apiece. Sorry for any confusion. Still, the fact remains that NASA needed to protect this film from radiation in bags of water. This leads us to another piece of clarification. A certain Wikipedia vandal has claimed I am trying to have my cake and eat it too. Claiming that I said it's impossible to take film photographs in cislunar space, yet I use photos from Lunar Orbiter to prop up other so-called outlandish claims. This is another apples and oranges comparison. The film used on Lunar Orbiter was Kodak SO243, a film known for its high resistance to radiation. The Hasselblad used Kodak Ektachrome ISO160, which is not radiation resistant. Hell, even Douglas Arnold described this film as being ordinary film. 
It was Kodak film, and the sensitization of the film was essentially the same as ordinary film at that time. It was Ektachrome X, as it was then called, 64 ASA, or ISO, as we need to say now. ASA is all gone. Uh, or 160, which was then a very fast film, of course, 160 ASA, or ISO. And there is nothing outlandish about my claims regarding lunar orbiter photographs. I don't believe I've used them for anything other than pointing out that Apollo landmarks photographed by post-Apollo craft were already mapped in advance by Lunar Orbiter. And the fact that the halo, supposedly caused by Apollo 15's engine plume, exists in these Lunar Orbiter photos that predate all Apollo landings. If Webb does go ahead responding to my 23-part series, I feel it is best to get this out the way real quick. For now, allow me to finish up with an interesting comment on the video that comes from none other than Astro Brandt 2. When a person's belief is wrong, he, she, will always resort to deliberate misrepresentations in order to promote their views. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, propagandists tend to attribute their own foibles to their opponents. Thank <laughs> you.